Hi, my name is Mary Irwin. I'm a professional makeup artist. I've worked all over the world and I'm currently, as we all are, working from my living room. Today's topic is how to look great on video calls. It's going to be a combination of makeup applied specifically for this kind of camera, which is great because most computers' cameras are not super HD, so you can actually get away with less makeup than normal, just strategically applied, and then making sure that you've got good lighting because recessed overhead track lighting does no one any favors. The camera on your computer does not pick up as much detail as the human eye and definitely not as much as HD cameras, but it will flatten your face out a little bit so you lose some dimension, which means that you can use a little more contour and a little more bronzer than you normally would. Your main focus should be on good skin, dimension in your face, and defining your eyes. I'm gonna start by cleansing my face. This is a Cogendo Cleansing Spa Water. It's a hydrating, soothing micellar water. I'm gonna follow up with the Cogendo Moisture Spa Gel. This is kind of a five-in-one treatment. It's lightweight, hydrating, soothing, calming, acts as both a serum and a moisturizer. It's a go-to in my professional kit. I'm going to hydrate lips with the Wonder Gloss Balm Addict in Rose. <laughs> I'm going to prime with Air Atelier Primer. This is my personal one, you can tell because it's almost gone and I love it. It's an artist designed brand. It's basically primer for people who don't like primers and I'm a person who doesn't like primer. So I'm just going to put it where I know I have issues across my T-zone, over my pores. I'm a very classic combo skin so don't be afraid to treat the skin through your t-zone differently than the skin on your cheeks if you find that there's a big difference in texture or tone I'm going to prime with the Viseart primer I really only like two primers one is the Viseart and one is the Air Atelier since I'm using Viseart shadows today I figured I would stick with their primer because they work together beautifully little tiny bit you just pat it in on the lid I'm going to take just a neutral skin toned shadow and go all over my lid from the lash line all the way up to the brow bone. There's no law about starting with eyes first or starting with skin first. It's totally personal preference. Today I just felt like starting with eyes. This is the Viseart Spritz palette. I love it, it's beautiful. You want to take whatever color is neutral for your skin tone, for me it's this, and just focus it here in the outer corner because when you're on a Zoom call, you're probably on for professional purposes. I'm going to keep the makeup fairly light, but this is basically just a 10 minute face. An office environment appropriate makeup. And if you work somewhere where you can wear a smoky out of work, let me know because I want to come work with you. So I've got it blended mainly in the outer corner. It's above the crease. It's still very neutral. And then I'm just gonna go in and again, depending on your skin tone, I'm just gonna take this because it's my skin tone-ish shimmer, put it on my lid, remembering that matte pushes back and shimmer pulls forward. So essentially I'm just drawing attention to my eyelid. I'm gonna take this lightest color this lightest shimmer and just put it on the inner corner of my eye, brighten up the corner, pretend that I've been sleeping and not staying up until five in the morning. I'm gonna show you how to pop your eye naturally. So take this pencil, you can use really whatever color you like. I do go a little bit darker than I normally would for teleconferencing just because if you've got more emphasis right at the lash line, the camera picks it up a little bit better. I'm gonna do one eye with brown and one eye with black so you can see the difference. But you're gonna tight line, you're going to push it into the underside of your lashes. So instead of just doing it above, you're gonna do it in. You see how it just defines this lash line? There's nothing on this side. 
this side doesn't look like I'm wearing liner, but it's a lot thicker. I'm going to focus a little bit on the outer corner and I'm just going to smudge it a little. On this side, I'm going to take a black pencil and do the same thing just to show you the difference in how they read. So that's with the black, that's with the brown. I'm going to just put some on the outer corner as well. And I'm going to blend. Do you see how much stronger the eye with the black liner looks than the eye with the brown liner, even though they're both softly blended out? I'm going to curl my lashes. That makes a huge difference in how open and awake your eyes read, just in general, in life, but especially on camera. This is the Surratt Lash Curler. It's my holy grail. I don't know what deal with the devil he made to make it so good, but it's magic. No, it's not. It's science. It's just a slightly different shape. It's a little wider. It's a little bigger. So you can really get into the corners without worrying about pinching yourself. And here is another little magic trick. Using a brown mascara is always going to be the softest look. Using a black mascara is always going to be the strongest look. Using a blue mascara or a navy mascara pops the white of your eye because of how color theory works. And so you can get essentially the same strength almost as a black mascara, but blue just helps to visually reduce the redness or even the yellowness in your eye. This is the Kogendo Maipshani Long Lash Mascara in navy. And there's a lot of incredible things about this, but one of the things that I like the most is that it's a tubing mascara, but you can build volume with it. And a tubing mascara literally just wraps tiny tubes around each of your lashes, and it comes off with warm water, but it doesn't smudge or move throughout the day. So if you're someone like me where you have short, delicate lashes that aren't very thick, but they tend to smudge all over the place, or if you have a hooded eye and you cannot keep your mascara from ending up here, within an hour. Magic. The shape of this wand is also special because it's very small bristles. It's very tightly packed, so it's getting every single lash, but it's a curve so you can get into each corner. And don't forget to put mascara on the top of your lashes too. It's not just on the bottom. Do you see how much whiter this eye looks than this one right now? And you see that mess that I made up there? If you make a mess with your mascara, don't try to clean it up right away. Give it five or 10 minutes, let it dry, and then go in with a clean, dry cotton bud, and it will come right off and you don't have to redo your makeup. If you go in while it's wet, you're just gonna end up with a disaster smudge all over here. With this mascara, I like to put it at the very base of the lash, wiggle, 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 and pull it out. Again, that gives the effect of the lash line being thicker. Do you see how bright with the black liner and the navy mascara, the white of my eye is? Now that the mascara that I've smudged all over my eyeball is dry, I'm just gonna go in with a clean, dry Q-tip and wipe it off. The three things that frame your face are brows, eyes, and lips. I started with eyes just because I can. So next with brows, spoolie your brow up or use a brow brush. Look and see where there's holes. You might be like me where you've just never had a lot of brow. This is the Kogendo Maishani Brow in light brown. I like to use two brow colors because I'm a redhead and I feel that using a neutral brown and a red pencil gives me a more natural look than just one or the other. Because this pencil is super baby fine, do you see how tiny that pencil is? You're able to really get in there and draw individual hairs on, like almost hair by hair so it looks more natural than if you were to just go in there and go nuts. I'm gonna follow up with my red pen from Surratt. 
Do you see how by having eyes and brows on, the rest of my face automatically looks a little more polished? So now is when I'm going to do skin. Start with my Kokendo Life Shani. I wear 001 because without fail, I will always be the lightest color that any brand makes. Welcome to being translucent, Irish, Scottish, English. I'm not genetically meant to see the sun ever. That's all you need. That's actually a lot for me. Like I don't really need as much as I just put on. And this formula is so beautiful. I know it looks super pale right now, but what I'm doing right now is neutralizing the redness in my skin. And once this gets blended in, it's actually going to look exactly like my skin tone. There's one coat of, I would say like a light to medium coverage foundation. So you can see now I really only need a little bit of concealer under the eye, which I'm going to use the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. And the teeny tiniest amount of this is more than enough. Do you see how tiny? It's like a pinhead size. There's just a little bit of concealer so much less than you would normally use in real life because if you're looking at where it's picking up on the camera, all I need is here. Now comes the fun part. Because the camera makes everything one dimensional, and we'll talk a little bit about this more when we talk about how to light for this, but the camera kind of flattens your face out. You're not really seeing 3D. And this is where you will add some contour and some bronzing to bring dimension back into your face. The one that I've been obsessed with for myself is, again, the Kagendo Maishani Contour Powder. It's so easy to use, it's basically it's basically like a non-tour. Like, it's, it's almost foolproof. So, you're just going to go, this is an amazing neutral gray-brown. This color is basically the perfect contour for anyone who's light to medium. A little bit, not a lot looking at where the light hits you and where you're starting to get a shadow. Basically you start here because that's where the jaw and the skull connect. You work your way in, a little bit here. Take your highlighter, hit the top of your cheekbone. I love this highlighter because it's not yeah, it's not a dramatic disco ball highlighter. It's not one of those you can see it from space. You get this delicate reflectiveness without looking super over the top. Do you see the difference in dimension on this side versus this side? Because this side has nothing. And this side, you see dimension. I'm gonna throw a little bronzer and a little blush on. This is my favorite. Fizzy Art Theory Palette Ablaze. And a little makeup artist secret that everybody I know does and almost nobody talks about. Take whatever's remaining on your blush brush and just dust it really lightly over the eye. It brings this cohesion together without looking obvious. I also did all of this before powdering because powder really is to set your makeup. So if you're powdering and then you're putting the rest of your face color on over that, your the rest of the color that you're putting on is gonna have a hard time clinging to the powder because the powder is designed to set. I'm gonna go ahead and contour the other side of my face so that I match. Something I really like about this too is that the highlight has multiple tones to it. There's a silver pearl aspect to it and there's also a blue gold aspect to it. So it's got dimension, but it's not just, ooh, it's silver highlight. It's a really beautiful, like it's a really exceptional highlight and contour palette. So now that we've got the rest of our face on, I am going to set with powder, but I'm only going to set with a little tiny brush just where I can use the mattifying. So middle of the forehead, down the nose, under the eye, and around 
the nose. Eh, maybe a little on the chin. Do you see how by putting powder and mattifying in targeted places, I don't look shiny, but I've still kept that glow. That's something that makeup artists do almost constantly, is figure out where the light is going to hit you and then mattify accordingly. I'm gonna go back and show you the difference in how white the eye that I did with the black liner and the blue mascara is versus the eye with the brown liner and the blue mascara. To me, there's a visible difference, so I'm going to even it out on this side. So for a professional lip color, depending on your work environment, you might be able to get away with something really, really fun, but most of the time you need to stick with either, you know, something kind of neutral or I love a red on a conference call because I feel like the red lip draws attention to you as you're speaking and takes away from maybe your environment or anything else that's going on. It kind of projects an image of power. I'm gonna start with a neutral lip and then show you a red lip. So this is three custom color, warm pink. I'm just doing a liner. There's a basic professional zoom look. You can also do a red lip, which I'm gonna show for you now. There you go. Quick, easy zoom face. Now we talk about lighting. Your best lighting is always going to be natural light directly in front of you. But if you're like me and your apartment doesn't get great natural light, I'm on the south side of the street, so I face north, and I'm on the ground floor in a 1901 brownstone. So I just don't get a lot of great natural light, so I have to fake it, which means that I've bought a little light off of Amazon, and I just put it directly behind my computer. But do put some consideration into what kind of light you have in your house. Overhead is never gonna be very flattering. Let me show you. So this, is my living room with overhead lighting. Not particularly cute. If you walk down my hallway, where we go into no lighting, overhead light, still not great. Casting shadows, we go into the kitchen, overhead light, also not great. Going back down the hallway, do you see how grainy it gets without good light? That's also because the computer is trying to read where there is any light. As we get closer to the natural light, it's still a bit better, but my best option in my situation is to light my environment. The easiest way to light a room that doesn't have great natural light is to turn off your overheads because they're always gonna cast a weird shadow and never be too flattering and light from directly in front of you or slightly off to one side. This was, I think, 15 bucks on Amazon. Clips on, pretty little ring light. It's super flattering light. It makes everyone's face look great. Blown out. The other tip I have is to wear a lighter color shirt while you're on camera. It pops a little bit of light upwards as opposed to wearing, say, a black shirt, which brings it down, and it brightens your face up just a little bit. To recap, Light is the most important. It's about skin and dimension in the skin, eyes and lashes, and like right now, a lip that makes you pop on camera. I hope you found this informative and helpful, and let me know what questions you have. Thanks for watching.